Hello and welcome to this video on the leading reason for home distilling's bad reputation, methanol blindness. During the American Prohibition era, many discerning and industrious entrepreneurs decided to make some extra money. They did this by distilling their own alcohol to sell. These people were industrious, but not necessarily knowledgeable. They often made alcohol, but did not distill it properly. This led to more than a minute amount of methanol that may still find its way into your distillate. Theirs contained a lot. In fact, not so long ago in Bali, Indonesia, they had a similar problem. Bali is a hotspot for parties and many nightclubs, which were serving either homemade or rebottled spirits. They made spirits that had methanol. This led to blindness and, in extreme cases, death. In fact, methylated spirits are a mixture of 95% ethanol and 3% methanol. This is to dissuade people from drinking it. Clearly, methanol is dangerous. This is why home distillers will always discard at least the first 100 milliliters of their distillate. Methanol boils off from their wash first. Taking this first 100 milliliters ensures that if you don't take all of the methanol, at least nearly all of the methanol out, and you can then dispose of it. Doing so leaves behind a safe ethanol distillate in the case of a column still, or a flavoured spirit in the case of a pot still. Why then is methanol bad, and how does it cause the problems that we've mentioned, among others? Methyl is a simple alcohol, and chemically it's used to make a whole lot of different things, everything from plastic through to paints and more. It is the simplest of alcohols, and is very closely related to ethanol, ethanol being the second most simple alcohol out there. Despite this, it cannot be consumed safely. When you do consume it, the liver converts methanol into formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is used as a preservative in the deceased, but is also not good for the body. The body can handle small amounts of methanol, but when the body gets a higher dose than it can deal with, it leads to poisoning. Methanol is also known as methyl alcohol, wood alcohol, and a few other names. It is the simplest of alcohols, being a carbon with three hydrogens and then a hydroxyl group. You can see that here, and it's often abbreviated to something as simple as a capital M, lowercase e, capital O, and capital H. It is very light, which means it turns into a gas easily. It's colorless, volatile, and flammable. This is why it's used in some camping stoves. It does have a distinct odor to it, which is why you can tell what it is when comparing it to ethanol, except when mixed into other alcohols or beverages that have an overwhelming odor. Methanol is historically made by distilling wood, and this is a process that's not really used anymore. Rather, carbon monoxide is hydrogenated, which is what produces methanol. That can then be used to produce things like acetic acid. It doesn't take very much methanol to poison the body. In fact, as little as 10 milliliters. This is about the equivalent of a quarter of a shot glass. A tiny amount when you consider how much could be mixed into an otherwise normal alcoholic beverage. That can lead to things like permanent blindness and destruction of the optical nerve. When you get to larger amounts, like 30 milliliters, or about three quarters of a shot glass, it can kill. Generally, it's considered that the median, almost frequent, lethal dose is 100 milliliters, about three fluid ounces, or about three shot glasses worth. Clinically, though, it's about one to two milliliters per kilogram of body weight. This means women are more prone to injury by it than men, larger people, less than smaller people, and so on. By weight, methanol is about half a milligram per kilogram in any given day. The effects of methanol toxicity begin hours after ingestion, and interestingly enough, even if you do receive an antidote to methanol poisoning, it can still cause permanent damage. 
The way this most frequently occurs is as a byproduct of people using it to thin out ethanol based alcohols. Ethanol, since it can be consumed, is often taxed. Buying methanol is not, as it's not considered something fit for human consumption. Since the similarities are almost indistinguishable, and you can buy one cheaper without the taxation, inscrutable people will use it to dilute their alcohols which they then sell. In other cases, it's used industrially for things like denatured alcohol. Methanol toxicity occurs two ways. First is the damage to the central nervous system. This is your brain and spinal cord. Since it can act as a depressant in some of the same ways as ethanol can, it can cause your respiration and heart rate to drop to dangerously low levels. Second is a byproduct of the way the body deals with methanol. In order to remove the methanol, it needs to be metabolized, which in turn turns it into formaldehyde. Formaldehyde then turns into formic acid. This is done by something called alcohol dehydrogenase. It's found in the liver. The conversion of methanol to formaldehyde and then formic acid is, at least theoretically, a good way to handle it. The problem is that the formaldehyde and the formic acid both cause harm to the body. Formic acid, in particular, inhibits the mitochondria, and within the mitochondria, the mitochondrial cytochrome C oxidase. This causes hypoxia. Hypoxia is effectively suffocation, but at a cellular level. This in turn leads to metabolic acidosis and a series of other metabolic disorders. Ultimately, it causes the body to begin shutting down. The first signs of methanol poisoning are very similar to being drunk, and they include headaches, nausea, vomiting, blurred visions, but finally, things like convulsions, which generally is not associated with drinking. In a somewhat ironic twist of fate, the treatment for methanol poisoning is consumption of ethanol. There are also drugs available, such as formisopol, but both of these work via the same action. They inhibit the alcohol dehydrogenase or enzyme that would cause the conversion of methanol to formaldehyde and then formic acids. You then give the person hemodialysis to remove the methanol and any other products that were generated as a result of metabolism. This enzyme's an important target as it's what converts the ethanol or even methanol into aldehydes. Aldehydes are what the formaldehyde is. Both of them can be converted into aldehydes to some extent. Methanol simply gets converted into formaldehyde and then into its more aggressive formate form. Formaldehyde's conversion into formic acid is what's particularly bad. The pathway here, so long as you can stop it before it gets to formic acid, isn't going to cause as much long-term harm. The problem is primarily that formic acid. It's an extremely harsh-acting nerve toxin, and it can result in a lot of damage very quickly. We've already mentioned how it targets the mitochondria in particular, and this is because the optic nerve seems to be especially vulnerable to the effects. It takes only a fractional amount, about 15 milliliters, to cause blindness. And from there it can lead to the entire body becoming affected, often to lethal ends. As mentioned, the nerves, and notably the eyes, are particularly sensitive to this process. This is why methanol poisoning turns you blind. And this is also why you always discard the first 100 milliliters of your distillate why you should only drink from reputable places, and while drinking yourself blind, make sure you really are not going blind. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.